When I first started printing with my 3D printer, it was with an ABS plastic. And at the time, I didn't know any better. I just thought ABS was the filament that we chose because a roll was delivered with, at the time, the Replicio Prusa i3 3D printer. Shortly after printing with ABS, I discovered PLA plastic, and that was a total game changer. No longer was the part having trouble sticking to the bed. No longer did I have to ramp up the bed temperatures to, to keep the part stick, uh, sticking to the bed, and I didn't have to worry about unpleasant fumes while the printer was printing. But since then, ABS has come a long way. We have these newer style ABSs, which tweak the recipe just a bit to reduce the amount of warping that we're normally accustomed to with ABS. So in this video, let's have a look at a, a, a different ABS plastic. This is ABS Plus from eSun, and we'll measure it against a traditional ABS plastic. Before we begin, I just want to mention this is not a product review. I wasn't given any of these filaments from the manufacturers. I purchased both of these spools with my own money. I'm just curious to see if these newer style ABS plastics are at all worth purchasing now over traditional ABS and also for printing high temperature tolerant parts. Normally I print in PETG these days for parts that need slightly higher temperature tolerance than PLA or that need the ductility of PETG rather than the brittleness of PLA. So I'm just curious to see how this ABS plus filament performs uh, over traditional uh, ABS filament. So this black spool of ABS I purchased from eBay. I think it was over 12 months ago now. There is there's no sticker on here to tell me who the manufacturer is, so I can't even tell you what the brand of this one is. So let's get stuck into it. Here is the Pion 230 quadcopter arm printed in eSun's ABS Plus. It's stuck to the print and see plate fairly easily. I can't see, at least in the front anyway, any warping uh, from this part off the plate. The only issue that I did encounter was just at the rear of the arm, just, uh, just over this side here, where it looked like it started to lift, but what was actually happening here is that back rear corner of my bed was a bit lower than the rest of the bed, so when this print started, I quickly had to tweak the uh, the spring just to lift this side of the bed up, and that prevented any further lifting of the quadcopter arm. So I would say that eSun's ABS uh, Plus sticks quite well, actually, to the print and Z plate. Now let's see how easy it is to actually remove it from this plate. Oh yeah. Hear that cracking noise, it's always a good sign. And you can see, it's just lifting at the front there now. Oh, that's pretty good. Nice and easy. You can still see that, uh, that stress, stress fractures or, or stress marks from the ABS plastic being pulled away from the plate. Generally means it's stuck on pretty well. And we can measure the flatness of this Pion 230 quadcopter arm. What we're looking for here is a dead flat surface. We don't want any bowing or warping uh, at all on this piece. And you can see that's pretty good. Can't see light shining through the middle or the edges. Here's the exact same Pion 30 quadcopter arm printed with the exactly the same G-code file and the result is the same as the eSun ABS Plus. No lifting or warping on the print and Z plate. Let's see how easy this regular ABS is to remove from the print and Z plate. See it lifting in the same location over here. Yep, just as easy as the eSun ABS Plus. 
Okay, let's try printing something a little more difficult for ABS. I'll try printing the top plate of the Peon 230, and we'll see if we can coax any lifting out of traditional ABS or eSun's ABS Plus. So printing the Peon 230 top plate in this traditional black ABS plastic has caused quite considerable warping right on this back corner here. As you can see, that's, that's quite a lot that's lifted from this piece. So this will be a, a good test actually to see if the Isan ABS Plus suffers the same fate as this black ABS just on this side here or if it's able to hold on to the print and Z plate throughout the entire print. And here's the completed Peon 230 top plate printed in eSun's ABS Plus using the exact same G code that I attempted to print with the traditional black ABS over here. And you'll see in the same location where the black ABS lifted, this ABS has not lifted. There's only a very slight, slight gap there in between, if I can get that to focus, where the, uh, the outer layer hasn't made contact with the printed Z plate. And again, my bed during this test wasn't dead flat and also I wasn't squishing down the ABS plastic like I normally do as if I squish it down too much on the printed Z plate it's hard to get off uh, but here you can see it hasn't warped on any of the corners show you around this around this part and if I just line up the black ABS next to the orange it's very clear to see just how much the black ABS has warped compared to the orange. Time to remove this part from the print and Z plate. That's a good sound. You can see it's easily coming away. Almost. There we go. There it is. And if I grab my steel ruler we can see just how flat this ABS part is. Would you look at that? That is very very flat. Anyone printing with ABS will know printing an exact flat piece like this is actually quite difficult. Even though this ABS plus plastic successfully printed the Peon 230 top plate without warping both of these still needed very high bed temperatures. I was printing at 90 degrees Celsius for the bed plate. And also, as they are both ABS plastics, they do give off quite nauseating fumes while printing. So ensure you're using ABS plastic in a well-ventilated area. In fact, printing with any plastics, you should really be printing in well-ventilated areas. Even though this ABS Plus performed quite well on this print and Z plate, a downside to using ABS Plus is it doesn't react with acetone anywhere near as much as traditional ABS. That generally means acetone vapor smoothing is probably not going to work so well. Judging by this test, how eSun's ABS Plus performed compared to traditional ABS, this really could be the rebirth of ABS that we use for our 3D printers. Traditionally, I've stopped using ABS because it's just too difficult to print with. It warps too easily, it doesn't stick down to the bed as nicely and as often as I'd like. Uh, but with the newer style ABS filaments, which promote low warping, really could be the renaissance period of this particular plastic. And also another benefit of ABS over the top of, say, a PETG, which is what I've normally been printing with in lieu of ABS, is the price. ABS is basically the same cost as PLA, where PETG is 
quite a lot more. So depending on how much you actually print, printing with ABS, these, these newer ABSs that, that promote low warping, might be economically better for you.